Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. How's everybody doing, man? It was a long weekend for me, starting out about Wednesday last week at uh, Vegas Torino, getting some qualifying done, and uh, just a long, long weekend. Had lots of uh, lots of action at Vegas Torino, but uh, the fun part is I've got uh, Jesse and Jarrett Johnson here on hold, both of them uh, running Vegas Torino along with me, and uh, we'll see what uh, see what their take is on uh, Vegas Torino. You guys there? Hey, what's yeah. up, Jim? Well, how's everything going? I know, uh, I know. I believe Jarrett's back on the East Coast. Jesse's on the West Coast, and uh, together for the weekend, and uh, already spread back out, huh? Yep. Yeah, Jared, I just uh, Jarrett's there last night. So yeah, uh, I just uh, I'm, here, I'm here again from Taos time, man. It, uh, it was a long flight. Oh, I'm sure, man. That's uh, kind of a whirlwind uh, travel tour. Let's uh, let's start off. I mean, I, I know a couple months back I got the press release uh, about you, you know, coming back to your roots and, and doing a little bit of off road racing. I mean, uh, is it something you wanted to be, you know, doing for a while? I mean, going uh, trophy truck racing. I mean, how did that whole deal come about? Yeah, it's um, man, it's always in our blood. I mean, we grew up doing it and stuff, and you know, it's uh, this the the, the NASCAR stuff is 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 a lot of fun and. I mean, the truth on that I've always liked was, you know, the desert racing and short course stuff. And uh, I think, you know, it's it's so hard right now, the economy and w- with everything going on with, you, you know, the, the NASCAR circuit, it's just, it's just tough. And um, I'm trying to open my doors and different avenues to, you know, stay in the seat. So uh, Jeff Seifert and uh, Josh Baldwin, we put this deal together with Seifert and, come out and did it and uh we had we had a blast you know wish we had the better results but you know we had a couple issues there and but uh we still ended up finishing finishing so it was yeah. Fun. yeah anytime you can finish a 500 and i guess 35 mile race it's uh pretty brutal i don't care if it's uh nascar off-road any discipline man it's just a, it's a long tough race to finish oh by far it um you know we had a little issues there in the beginning the gps started glitching out on us and then um, the throttle linkage on the truck messed up, and so we only had a half throttle for a majority of the race. Um, so we had a lot of shifting going on, going up through the, the mountains and stuff. So that was pretty rough. Yeah, especially you get into some of those silt beds and only half throttle, man. You need all the all the go juice you can get to get through some of those. <laughs> By far, yeah. So uh, Jesse, let's uh, let's talk about uh, your program. I mean, obviously everybody knows your brother was in the trophy truck. You uh, ran with uh, Lalo in the the seventy two hundred uh, speed energy truck. How'd that go? I think it's uh, your first time back in the desert in a while, isn't it? Yeah, it was actually my uh, my first desert race. Um, it went pretty well. Uh, Lalo got stuck for a little bit um, before he handed the truck off to me, um, and then we had a he ended up clipping something and bending a tie rod, so we had a little bit of downtime, um, and then. We took off, didn't really have any issues. Um, then when I got out, the fuel regulator was leaking. Um, so had some downtime fixing that, um, then got back on course. Um, we finished, though. I'm excited to just be able to say we finished. It was a long race, but I had a blast out there driving those, driving that thing. I can't thank Speed Energy and RPM enough for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, safe to say you, you kind of got the – I know you've been doing the short course thing for a while, and I kind of – Safe to say you got bit by the desert bug and going to try and get back in the seat uh, in some of the longer races, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely want to get back in the desert again. Um, it was awesome. Um, it sounds like I'm going to get to run the Baja 1000 this year, so I'm excited. I remember going there as a kid and always wanting to go and drive that race, so um, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that should be should be awesome. Well, uh, I mean, what's uh, what's things looking like? I mean, obviously you've had uh, some some pretty good results in the short course side of things this year. How's uh, how's everything shaping up going into? I guess Reno is it two weeks away? Um, Reno's actually this weekend. I gotta prep the truck tonight and load on the trailer and head back up there. Um, but it's looking good. We had some problems out in Glen Helen. Uh, we stripped out one of the sway bar arms and we didn't catch until we got home to the shop. Um, so we ended up having a couple flips out there. But we're ready for Reno and ready to go get another win. Awesome. Well, Jarrett, uh, how's everything going uh, back on the on the East Coast? I mean, obviously everybody knows you. You know, you've done some NASCAR racing and in, in nationwide and in trucks in the past. Uh, you've also got a fabrication shop, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's going good. We got some stuff, you know, in, in the works. It's just it takes forever. Um, 
to put one of these deals together, you know, and the last couple of years I had my own equipment and, and stuff and was running the K&N E-Series and it just, it, you know, I, I didn't have no big trailer. We were using dad's work truck and a 26 foot enclosed trailer getting to the races and stuff and, you know, a bunch of volunteer guys and I ended up getting rid of all that stuff and, you know, I have a wife and uh, two kids and put, you know, all my effort into, you know, the family here for a couple of years and, now just spreading it out, you know, got, we got some stuff in the works and hopefully we could put it together a, a short course deal and may, maybe run some desert, some more desert stuff. Um, that, that would be the ultimate goal. It's just, it's tough, you know, being on the East coast, you know, I'd prefer to, you know, if something did happen, you know, the equipment would be out and on the West coast and fly back and forth because it's a long drive. Yeah, uh, question for you. I know Torque, uh, speaking of short course, they ran that uh, race in Charlotte. Were you able to make it out there earlier this year when they had the race in Charlotte? Yeah, we went, and, um, you, you know, Ricky Johnson's like a, like an older brother to us, so um, we went out and hung out and saw Steph and, you know, hung out Bryce and, you know, RJ, and wouldn't miss it, man. It's uh, it's cool stuff, you know. It's 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 real neat. You know, that that's another avenue that could be pursued, too, Um to try to put some stuff together, especially it's back here on the East Coast. So we're working on stuff, and we'll have to see what happens, you know. Awesome. Do you, uh, it, any chance we may see you uh, back in the seat uh, with Seifert sometime, you know, in the future? I mean, was that just one race deal, or maybe maybe the door's open for some future races? There, there's definitely opportunities there. Um, you know, Jeff's a great guy. He um, – He's done a lot for me in the past, and, you know, we grew up race, racing together out there in California, um, the spec trucks, the roundy round stuff and and all that. And um, he's got some plans and some ideas, and, you know, if we could, you know, come together and, and put some stuff together, you know, it's uh, it would be cool, you know. It um, Jeff's stuff is top-notch equipment, you know. He, if, he, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it right. You know, it's just the um, – just the whole picture of the whole thing coming together is is what needs to happen to to have it all right. So um, there's definitely opportunity there, and um, you know with uh, with everybody over there, they did a great job this weekend, and uh, it was uh, it was a good time. Yeah, shoot for for both you and Jesse to uh, to make the finish line. That's uh, pretty awesome, you know. Especially you know your first time back in the saddle in a while. His first desert race. I mean, you know, I I strictly run desert racing. I didn't make it to the finish line. So hats off to both of you guys for for making it there. I appreciate it. It was a <laughs> it was a blast. Awesome. So, uh, I mean, what uh, what do we see? Uh, I mean, I know, Jesse, you said uh, you're going to do the 1,000 this year. You're wrapping up, uh, you, you know, obviously the Lucas Oil season is, is kind of winding down. A, a few races left. Uh, you know, what do, what do we have on the horizon for, for possibly 2013 from you? We're still going to concentrate on, uh, you, know, on, on the, you know, on the series you're running or maybe see you try and fund a, a deal in the stadium super trucks? Or what are we looking at for you for next season? Um, you know, we got some stuff in the works. Um, I'm definitely going to try to run the stadium series and then I also still want to stick to short course and run some more short course stuff hopefully move up to pro light um, and then hopefully um, do some more desert stuff next year awesome and uh, Jared I mean anything uh, I know you said you've got some stuff in the works any, any plans for sure so far for 2013 or are we just going to kind of wait and see and see what come, gets put together so I'm still just waiting. It's uh, I I got to make some phone calls today and see. Um, you know, right now all the budgets on the, the NASCAR stuff are trying to be set and and all that. So we'll see. Um, I just got to get to the get rocking here and, and figure some stuff out. So hopefully we'll be back out there playing around and and then doing it. So that'll be fun. I gotta say we've got uh, we've got you two both uh, back doing some some desert racing back in the roots. Any chance uh, we're gonna see like a, a trifecta of Johnson brothers running a trophy truck at the thousand some year or something? <laughs> uh, th- there might be something coming down the pipe on that deal. I, I mean, Jimmy misses it a lot. You know, um, I don't know if it would be the the thousand side of it, but maybe some stuff in the in the states. But um, uh, I know he misses it and uh, would absolutely love to be back in it. So, 
Awesome. Well, uh, I mean, you know, I know, uh, know you're trying to catch up on your sleep and, and stuff. Uh, anything you want to leave us uh, with before we let you guys go? Oh, I mean, we had a blast, you know, thanks to uh, everybody that came out, and it, it was a good time. You know, Jeff Seifert, I need to thank him, and Josh Baldwin, and everybody that put in the hard effort, and just the whole sanctioning body that uh, put on the race. Um, it, it was a good time. Yeah, awesome. I'd like to thank RPM and Speed for letting me get in the truck and had an awesome time, and I can't wait for the 1,000. All right, sounds good, and uh, good luck to you this uh, this weekend at Reno. It sounds like uh, they put together a pretty awesome facility up there. I mean, I, I've seen some of the pictures and stuff. It looks like uh, it looks like it should be be a fun track to race on. Yeah, I've just I've been checking out the pictures. I was actually on race as earlier, looking at them, and it looks like it's going to be a great track. Yeah, it should uh, should be fun. Uh, we'll be staying tuned, and good luck this weekend, and uh, good luck to both of you, and and we'll be in touch. We'll get you guys back on sometime soon. All right, sounds I good. Appreciate Thank you it. for having us. All right, thanks, Jarrett and Jesse. All right, thanks, buddy. All right, that was uh, Jarrett and Jesse Johnson, the the two Johnson brothers. Uh, pretty cool to have them both on air, especially uh, you know, it was kind of a, a last minute deal I was able to put together last night. Just uh, gave them both a ring, and they said, "Yeah, they'd come on." And you know, it's it's always tough for me to put interviews together after Vegas Torino or after the Four Twenty Five. It's uh, just tough because everybody's getting back from racing and. Uh, you know, and I'm just happy that uh, they both came on, and it was great to see both uh, the Johnson brothers back in the desert. You know, it's it's been a while since uh, we've seen them there, and I uh, hope to see them uh, more more often. It's a definitely a cool thing, and uh, both of them obviously talented drivers in their own right. And uh, I think it's awesome having them out there in the desert. So uh, hopefully we can see them. Uh, obviously, we're going to see Jesse at the thousand, and, and see Jarrett back in a trophy truck sometime sometime soon as well. Um, we're gonna gonna take a short, quick break here, and uh, we're doing things a little bit different today. Uh, normally, we have a trivia segment about now, um, but we don't have any uh, don't have any trivia for today. Uh, well, one, I didn't have a time to put together a question, and two, we ran out of all of our ringers gear that we've been giving away. So uh, I've got some more uh, trivia stuff coming on, but uh, we're gonna do a. Uh, we're going to go to a break, and we're going to have a speed energy report. And after that, we're going to have our fans' choice segment, uh, which, if you remember right, that's I take questions from you guys on the chat board. So uh, start posting up your questions on the chat board. Anything goes, uh, and I'll do my best to answer them all. So we're going to cut to a break, and we'll have our speed energy report. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, thanks for staying tuned during the break. Uh, speed energy report, uh, the big news is, is uh, – Obviously, we announced uh, last week, and uh, you know it's kind of been rumored, but uh, uh, Crandon's coming up. We're we're about two weekends away, Labor Day weekend, uh, the big one at Crandon. Uh, obviously, the biggest uh, the biggest short course race of the year. Um, you know, hands down. I mean, the absolute. It's the Indy 500 to short course racing. Um, there's no comparison. Uh, Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Trucks are going to be debuting at Crandon. We announced this last week. Um, it's going to be a six-truck race. Robbie is going to be in one of the six trucks, and uh, the rest of the field, uh, all five other drivers, are going to be past short course champions, uh, which should be really awesome. You know, you're going to have very capable drivers in those six trucks, and it should make for an absolutely awesome uh, debut race for the Stadium Super Truck Series. Uh, the entire schedule has been announced. It's on StadiumSuperTrucks.com and, and all over social media by now. Um, uh, starts off, it looks like we've got a couple races in San Diego. We've got the Coliseum. We've got Phoenix, Vegas, Texas. Um, it looks like Missouri is on there. Um, just all over uh, all over the country, I think uh, Atlanta, the Georgia Dome, should be, uh, should be awesome with a series he's got put together there, uh, you know, in 2013. Um, other Speed Energy news, uh, you know, obviously Robbie uh, raced Vegas Torino. Uh, we'll get into the full results here in a little bit. Uh, but the amazing thing about it is, is Robbie had uh, engine troubles. I guess his uh, engine went into vapor lock at uh, at qualifying, about a mile from the finish. Robbie had to start dead last. I believe like there was 56 people. He was back there. It wasn't 56. It was like 55, 54, something like that. Way back in the field, fought all the way through the field, um, and it ended up with a second place, uh, second place overall finish, second in class 1500. Uh, just absolutely amazing for him to do that. Uh, ran a very clean race. Uh, I honestly, I think he backed it down a little bit, uh, just trying to run a clean race and not cause any mistakes. Uh, 40 something seconds uh, behind was the, the end, uh, the end time. So uh, 
you know, honestly, uh, another 10, 20 miles, he may have uh, been able to walk away with a victory, which is amazing starting that deep in the field. Um, so that's uh, going to kind of wrap up your speed energy report. Uh, next up, we should have our fans' choice questions, but nobody's shooting me any questions today. And so I guess uh, we're going to skip that segment, and uh, we'll we'll try and pick it back up later. Uh, you guys have any any questions or anything for me? Shoot from the hip. Anything goes. Anything about Vegas Reno short course? I'll answer anything. So uh, last week we had uh, too many questions, and this week we've got none. So uh, I don't know. Go figure. Maybe you guys used up all your questions last week. But uh, we'll come back to that segment here in a little bit. Um, I guess the big one that everybody wants to know about is Vegas to Reno. Um, I guess first off, I will uh, I'll give you my uh, my race report, and then we'll get on to the to the full uh, to the full results uh, and analysis on what uh, what went down. But uh, I, I went to qualifying. Um, I you know I've got a knack personally for for destroying things in qualifying, driving the truck a little too hard. I've done everything from pitch belts to you name it. Uh, I've done it in qualifying. Uh, made a mental effort to. Uh, to back it down a little bit in qualifying, which isn't a good thing, but I wanted to get the truck to uh, to the race instead of destroying it. Um, you know, 535 mile race. You know, you can ruin your day in qualifying and and not even make the big show. So I figured it was more important to make the show and, and go from there. Uh, backed it down a little bit. I think I it was a couple actually a couple different uh, qual- official qualifying results. One was on Best of Desert site. One was posted at the thing. I think I was ended up. 38th out of uh, 56 is what I believe, um, you know, which is uh, for, for backing it down a little bit like I did, uh, probably right in line with uh, where I should have been. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, started off the race, everything was good, stayed in line, uh, making pretty decent time, about mile, mile 40 or 50 in a silt bed. I ended up uh, having a flat tire, uh, obviously not the tire's fault, and it really wasn't my fault. It was a brutal silt bed a couple feet deep. Uh, couldn't see much. Uh, buried under the silt uh, must have been a, a, a brutal rock because, um, you know, I just pretty much had a, a tire explode on me. Um, you know, and so, uh, I don't know, we had it all on video, how to rear-facing rear camera and saw the explosion and everything. I mean, it was just instantaneous uh, self-destruction. It wasn't like a puncture wound or anything. So it must have been something pretty brutal I hit. I didn't see it, obviously, because it was buried in the silt. Uh, got the tire changed, uh, dropped back a few spots. Uh, tucked back in line. Everything was going good about mile 210. Uh, I I made up quite a few positions and ended up having a front spindle problem. Not a day ending problem, but uh, it happened in a very remote part on the course, which uh, made it a day ending problem. If I would have had the parts there, uh, it would have happened in a pit. 15, 20 minutes would have been back up and running and uh, and gone. But uh, with the way Best in the Desert does, with the way Best in the Desert does their, their chasing, uh, you know what I mean, and, and retrieval uh, the way they have to here in the States, uh, made for uh, a day-ending day ending problem for me, which uh, probably shouldn't have been. Uh, the bright side is the truck is in really good shape for the next one in October. So uh, we will be there in October, um, My one of my two hometown races, so we should do pretty good, and we'll see you all in October. Uh, as far as the rest of the field goes, um, obviously, uh, we talked about Robbie Gordon, second overall, second in class 1500. Uh, the winner, Garrick Friedis, uh, putting together a pretty good season. He moves up into second in points behind Robbie Gordon. It's actually pretty close. Robbie just having a phenomenal year this year, though. Um, you know, I, I don't want to make any predictions, uh, beforehand, but, uh, with the way Robbie's been doing things, uh, I would say this early, uh, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be. Uh, in the in the hunt for a dirt sports driver of the year award that's my uh that's my prediction this uh about two-thirds of the way through the season if he keeps this up definitely going to be in the hunt for that uh coveted title there uh mark wayrick uh took the win in uh trick truck uh damon jeffries uh fourth overall third in class 1500 chuck hovey uh fourth uh in class 1500 fifth overall second in trick truck rick johnson in the general tire truck uh jason boss uh third in trick truck seventh overall steve seropis and rob mccachran sixth in uh or eighth eighth overall fourth in uh trick truck uh interesting note um rob mack he uh i guess they had their fuel mileage a little off um I, I don't know the true story, but uh, anyways, Rob Mack ran out of gas like 15 miles from a pit, 
Okay, so Rob Mack runs out of gas 15 miles for the pit, um, down for like 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, a BLM ranger ended up taking him a gas can of fuel. So a uh, BLM ranger goes out on the course somehow. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to know. I, I, I'm not going to make any predictions how or how that happened, but uh, it, kind of an oddity there. But anyways, uh, takes Rob back the gas. He gets the truck gassed up, goes to the pits, fills it up, tops it off, uh, continues on his way. Looking at this, Rob Mack lost by uh, by about 12 minutes. Uh, he was down for over 20 running out of gas. So uh, my prediction is uh, Rob didn't run out of gas. They had their fuel mileage squared away. Rob is your winner, and Rob Mack uh, would have had his 200th win. So uh, water out of the bridge by now, but, uh, you know, what what could have been? That's, uh, that's definitely racing, but... Uh, we will be uh, tuned in this weekend to see if uh, Rob Mack can get win number 200 in Reno. And if that doesn't happen, he's got two more shots at it uh, at the Cranon race uh, over Labor Day weekend. So my prediction is in the next uh, two weekends, Rob Mack is going to get that uh, monkey off his back and get win number 200. Um, finishing out your top ten overall, fifth in trick truck, a ninth overall was Tim Herbst and Larry Rossler. And uh, fifth in class 1500, 10th overall was uh, Corey Kesar. Uh, so that wraps up uh, your top 10 overall. We'll uh, skip down here to uh, some more some more results. Uh, 18th overall, first in pro truck was Troy Vest. Um, skipping down here to uh, class 10, uh, 26th overall, first in class 10, Tony Smiley. Um, 30th overall, first in uh, class 6100, uh, Jerry Zayden. Interesting note, that new class, that's that new V8 class, basically uh, trophy trucks, uh, trophy trucks with uh, with a crate V8 motor. Uh, this is the first race that uh, the new class has really been in effect. Uh, Jerry just dominating the field, first in uh First in 6100, uh, 30th overall, started way in the back, behind 7200s, behind so many different classes, and ended up beating a lot of the trick trucks, uh, you know, and dominating the 7200 field. So, uh, very interesting. Uh, it's going to be cool to see uh, the rest of this year, especially when we get to the October race. It's kind of a short, uh, almost like a short course race to how that truck does. But, uh, you know, I think uh, that class has a, a bright future after seeing what I saw after after the first race of uh, of the year. Um, skipping down here, some other class winners. Class 8, Don German with the win, um, who was also 36th overall. Class 7200, uh, 38th overall, first in class, uh, Parker Local and... Um, and the the builder of my trophy truck teaming up, Randy Merritt and Tracy Rubio, uh, taking first in Class 7200. Uh, and that's a pretty new truck. It's only got about three races on it. So uh, pretty amazing. Uh, you know, it's finished every race that it's been in so far. And uh, it's also uh, one Vegas Torino now. So congrats goes out to Tracy Rubio and Randy Merritt. Um, just a, a note, uh, Jarrett Johnson, who we talked to earlier, was uh, 39th overall, 14th in uh, Trick Truck. Uh, skipping down here, class 4400. Uh, that is the the Ultra Four class, uh, King of the Hammers type vehicles. Uh, um, 44th overall, first in uh, class was Nick Nelson. Um, class 1100, Brian Folks, uh, 47th overall. Uh, skipping down here even farther, Class 6, Trophy Lights, Troy Messer with the win, uh, 58th overall. And Class 8100, Tim Casey with a win. Uh, class 2000, Hank Winter coming home with the, with a first place trophy. Uh, class 1700, Michael Vernack with a win. Class 3000, Wes Beverly with a win. And, uh, we're, and wrapping this up, Class 1800, Chase Gaunt with a win. And Class 3700, uh, Dan Simonson with a win. So uh, that wraps up, uh, I believe, all your winners. Oh, we've got uh, two more stuck in here. I'm sorry. Class 4500, Larry McRae, um, Poison Spider Customs, uh, coming away with a win with his uh, daughter, Courtney McRae. Guess uh, after the King of the Hammers, I think we're going to have to get them back, uh, back on air and tell us about... Uh, how the Ultra Four Series is shaping up this year, and and what we've got going into King of the Hammers, I think that should uh, should be a good deal. We'll get Larry and Courtney back on air sometime. Um, class seventy one hundred, James Berman, uh, 
uh, coming away with a victory. So uh, that wraps up your four-wheeled vehicles. Let's uh, skip forward to uh, some motorcycle action here, and then we're going to get the UTVs. And uh, I've got some interesting, interesting notes on the UTVs. So uh, it should definitely be uh, should definitely be interesting. Uh, you know what I've got to say there, but. Uh, the big money, the ten thousand uh, dollars up for grabs for the first motorcycle to cross the finish line, um, went to Robbie Bell and David Pearson on a Kawasaki, the THR Kawasaki. Funny is, is uh, THR put up a lot of the a lot of the money for um, a lot of the money for this deal. So uh, THR keeping it keeping it in house. Robbie Bell and David Pearson with the win, eight hours fifty nine minutes. Um, second overall. Um, about six minutes back, Justin Morrow and Nick Burson on a Kawasaki. Uh, third overall on Unlimited Bikes, uh, Max Eddy Jr. and Mark Samuels. And uh, just uh, just an interesting note there, uh, the bikes taking the overall w- victory away from the cars and trucks by a mere two minutes. Uh, used to be the bikes just dominated the cars and trucks on any course we were on. Um, uh, the cars and trucks are, are becoming tougher. The thousand, you know, we've had some some vehicles overall and beat the bikes. Um, Vegas Reno, two minutes separated them. Uh, pretty interesting stuff there, but uh, definitely the gap has been narrowed. But uh, the bikes, uh, once again, taking taking the victory. Uh, number three twenty eight, uh, open expert Josh Wilson and Irving Powers with the win. Um, quad, the first quad across the finish line was uh, Danny Prather. And David Scott taking the win in quads. Um, you know, other winners we've got Stephen Fuller um, skipping down. Michael Johnson, uh, Jay Camberlengo, uh, Tony Guerra, Jeremy Purvins, Doug Smith, uh, Cody Mitchell, Jason Jacobson, Kurt Caruso, Juan Dominguez, and uh, Stephen Kirk. Uh, these are all uh, class winners. Greg Gilbert. And uh, I believe that's uh, that wraps up all of our uh, all of our winners in the bikes and quad classes. So congrats goes out to them. Do want to make a, a note uh, as far as the bikes go? Uh, Ford put up their EcoBoost uh, Performance Awards uh, for the bikes, which is amazing that an auto manufacturer putting up contingency for the motorcycle companies. But anyways, very well recepted. Um, I saw just about every bike in the field with a Ford sticker on there, which uh, which is pretty amazing, really. Uh, you see, in every motorcycle, regardless of manufacturer, with a Ford sticker on it, was uh, was kind of cool. Uh, so it's needless to say that the Ford EcoBoost rewards that Ford's putting up for the bike classes now is definitely uh, received uh, received well. Uh, I'm sure it's good for Ford. It's good for the bikes. A little extra money and. Uh, and like the the rep at Ford told me at Best in the Desert uh, or, or at the Vegas Torino race, he told me Jimmy, he says not one of these uh, not one of these motorcycles uh, pulls up to the race in a Kawasaki truck. Uh, so so you wonder why Ford's putting the money up for the bikes? They're all showing up to the races in Ford Super Duties, Ford F one fifties. That's the reason why the money's there. It's not uh, not for what they do on course, but it's uh, what they what they do to get to the course, uh, so to speak. So. Uh, like he said, as long as uh, as long as these guys are showing up to the race in Ford trucks and Kawasaki and Yamaha and uh, you know and Suzuki and Honda aren't making uh, aren't making vehicles, he says we'll continue to put up the money. So uh, there it goes. Um, I had mentioned uh, a little bit ago the UTVs. Okay, we've got some uh, official UTV results. Uh, class 1900 UTVs. Obviously, there's uh, quite a few classes in the UTV series, but. Uh, uh, Scott Kiger, Mark Holtz, and uh, William Yorkley coming away with the overall UTV win, 11 hours and 41 minutes. Now, uh, there's been a lot of talk on, on UTVs on the Internet, and, and actually at the race, it was kind of a buzz. I mean, you know, there was over 20 UTVs in this race. The industry is pouring tons of dollars. We've got major manufacturers in Polaris, Can-Am, Kawasaki. John Deere is building a UTV for Best in the Desert. Uh, Scratch built uh, UTV should be amazing that I, I heard got word of while we were up there. Um, the overall winner in the UTV class, 11 hours and 41 minutes. You realize that uh, that out of all the finishers in the cars and trucks, I should have done my homework, but I'm gonna I'm gonna skip down here. 120 finishers in the cars and trucks. That UTV would have finished 50th overall. Uh, you know, everybody says they're slow, get in the way. Uh, 50th overall, he built, he beat over, 
over 60, 70 uh, cars and trucks to the finish line uh, when you compare times. And not only that, that uh, that UTV would have been the winner of uh, of of the the trophy light class. Uh, he would have been right in the thick of things in class 7200, which is a mini trophy truck. Um, you know, these UTVs have come a long way, and, and it's amazing. I mean, you think about that 50th overall that guy did. I mean, that's uh, you know that that's running class you know 7200 times, class 10 times. You know, we we had talked uh, with Joey D from UTV Underground uh, a couple months back when we had our UTV Super Show, and he said, "You watch." He said, "In the next year, these guys are going to be consistently pulling Class Ten times." Um, boy, was he right! Uh, these guys are definitely stepping up their game, and if you see these things, they don't look like a UTV. I mean, they are basically, uh, you know, there, there's a bare chassis there, you know, that was a UTV chassis at one time, and other than that, it's it's totally scratch built. These guys got, you know tens of thousands of dollars uh, wrapped up into these things and they're definitely becoming hardcore uh, race machines uh i welcome them with open arms and, and seeing the times that they put together i don't know how anybody can say that uh, they don't belong on course because that's uh, pretty amazing another interesting note i'm going to give you guys a little heads up but i did talk to joey d and josh martelli from mad media and uh, looks like we're going to have another utv super show sometime in the next month or so and uh, we are going to have some representatives uh some some marketing representatives from, from some major UTV manufacturers. I'm not talking uh, parts companies. I'm talking actually the people that produce these things on air with us. So that should be really exciting. And they're going to give us a manufacturer's uh, a manufacturer's opinion on the state of the UTV industry. So I'm very much looking forward to having those guys on air. That should be uh, should be exciting. That it really should be fun. Um, so something to look forward to. But uh, other than that, uh, just a long, brutal race, uh, Vegas Torito. I mean, 535 miles, longest off-road race in the United States. Um, just brutal. I mean, it's silt beds, rocks. You should have seen some of the rocky area. I mean, I, I'm in an 800-horsepower trophy truck with 36 inches of wheel travel, and I'm going 10, 15 miles an hour doing rock crawling type of stuff. Um, something for everyone at Vegas Torino. You know, everything from graded dirt roads at 130 miles an hour down to 10 to 15 mile an hour rock crawls. It was a brutal race. Uh, hats off to anybody who finished because it wasn't easy. And uh, hats off to Garrett Friedis and Mark Weyrick for, for coming away with the big wins. And uh, to Robbie Gordon for fighting through the field and, and coming through 50-some uh, positions and, uh, you know, and, and coming up with a second place overall by only, uh, by only shoot, uh, 40 seconds. Uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, other than that, I do want to make mention too. Uh, you know, we we've uh, had a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of speed energy talk a little bit ago, but I do want to make mention. I, I talked to uh, talked to Robbie and Kevin at Speed uh, over the weekend. We are going to have Robbie sometime before Crandon on air talking about Stadium Super Trucks, the debut of the class at Crandon, and, and what uh, we've got going on, as well as him running a Pro Two at Crandon. So uh, we'll have Robbie Gordon back on. Uh, We'll have Robbie Gordon back on air sometime in the next week or two uh, talking about Crandon. So that should be exciting in itself. But uh, let's go down now to uh, some AMA motocross in Unadilla. Uh, motocross over the weekend. Obviously, I was racing, so I didn't get to check. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get to catch the, the race. Um, but there was some interesting storylines. Uh, Ryan Dungey uh, dominated again. Uh, you know, in the 450 class, which, you know, I think that's his eighth win in a row, uh, eighth overall win in a row. So just amazing. Where is Ryan Villapoto? That's what I want to say. Where is Villapoto? We need some uh, competition for Dungy. I'm saying the October Monster Million is going to be exciting. I think uh, Villapoto will for sure be back on the bike for that. I think uh, you're going to see him and Dungy do do battle. I mean, it should be uh, exciting. But Dungy with the win. Pickle second, short, Millsaps, and then Josh Grant, a new name kind of kind of sneaking into the top five there. Um, motocross points so far, uh, Dungey with 480, Alessi with uh, 367, 311 for short, Tickle with uh, 293, and uh, Ty with Weimer with 293. So that's your top five in points. Uh, Dungey phoning it in the rest of the season. Let's see if we can keep the streak going, though. Um, you know, not. I think there's only one race left in the in the series, though. So uh, one race left, and then we've got uh, the Monster Million in Vegas. Um, 250 lights. Uh, exciting news here was uh, 
We had uh, Mushkin with the win. Kind of, kind of cool to see Mushkin. That's his first, uh, his first win here in the states. Uh, first overall win here in the states. Uh, Tomac, Roxon, Barsha, and Baggett uh, rounding out, uh, rounding out your top five. We had uh, Tomac with a win and Roxon with a win, but uh, Mushkin with a second, a third. Uh, you know, pulling uh, pulling home the 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 victory there, but uh, 250 lights, Baggett, Barsha, Tomac, Roxon, and Mushkin round out your top five. Uh, those guys have been uh, been there all year. You know, pretty much the same five uh, battling it out. Um, you know, Baggett's got a decent lead over Barsha going into uh, the last race of the series, but uh, we'll see how uh, see how things shape up. Uh, should be. Should be exciting. I think, uh, you know, obviously uh, the motocross uh, 450s are, are pretty much done and over with, but uh, 250s, we've uh, still got a chance to, to to have a change up at the top. And uh, James Stewart finished uh, 15th overall. That's uh, another notable. So, you know, he's way down the list. I think, uh, I think long term, him and Suzuki are going to be a good match, but, uh, you know, he's had some injuries and some other stuff, and uh, we'll just have to... Uh, just have to see how uh, things round out for him. But uh, I think we've got some questions here now on uh, on the chat board, so we'll we'll th- we'll go back to our fans' choice questions. I think we've got a couple of them. And while I'm doing this, uh, go ahead and, and plug anything you want onto the chat board. And then I've got some exciting news uh, re- uh, coming up uh, later on in the show about uh, some future of the show. It should be uh, should be kind of cool. But uh, let's go down here. Do you think that next year having in effect three short course series will prove even more decisive than having uh, two series? Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, it, it should be interesting. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, my take on it is, okay, we've got Lucas Oil, they're West Coast. We've got Torque, predominantly East Coast. Uh, I think that Lucas Oil, you know, obviously their car counts are higher than Torque. We're not going to argue that. I'm, I'm not going to step out and say which which organization I favor. Anybody that knows me and knows my rants probably has an idea. But I, I have great relationships with uh, with both Lucas Oil and Torque. Uh, so I'm not going to, you know what I mean? They're both good people. They they just they market to a different demographic. Uh, you know, I think uh, Lucas Oil ha- definitely has a, a foothold in the West only because uh, West Coast racers, it's much more affordable and easy for them to race. I think uh, Torque, uh, you know, anybody that has Crandon and has Bark River, you're not going to go away. Those two venues in themselves, I mean, that's, uh, you know, let's let's go to the CART and IRL debate from way back when. You know, CART had all the car counts. IRL had nothing at the beginning, but uh, IRL had the Indy 500. Fast forward 15, 20 years later, Who's standing? The IRL is. They had the Indy 500. I, and I'm not saying that Lucas Oil is going to go away, but I'm just saying that Torque is not going to go away as long as they hold Crandon and Bark River because those are the two biggest venues in short course, and it's unarguable. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I think there there's a place for an East and West series. Uh, you know, I don't know that it's going to happen, and I, I, and I can almost guarantee you it's not going to happen under the same banner. I think what Robbie is offering with the stadium super trucks is, is a lot different than what the other two are offering. And I think that, uh, you know, I know what the, what it's going to cost to run a stadium super truck series. Uh, you know, they've been open about it. It's about 500 grand for the year. Uh, it, you know, you don't own the vehicle, but, uh, you know, you pay, pay 500 grand, you get the entire series, you know, they prep your truck, everything. I think that, uh, you know the the manufacturers and and the people that are involved. Not, I'm not talking auto manufacturers. I'm talking uh, part and uh, you know what I mean. In the companies, you know you, your monsters, rock stars, um, Lucas Oils, Ams Oils, Traxxas. You know those types that are sponsoring these cars. I don't think that they they are going to be able to subsidize uh, entries in the Stadium Super Truck Series. I think that you're gonna you're gonna have to drivers that want to compete in that are going to have to think outside of the box. You're going to have to go after Targets, Best Buys, um, you know what I mean, Walmarts, McDonald's, Burger King. You're going to have to look outside of the box for sponsors a whole lot more money because, you know, the the standard companies that people hit up for sponsors day in and day out in off-road racing currently cannot support a $500,000 uh, $500, sponsorship to run in the Stadium Super Truck Series. And Robbie's been open about that. And, uh, you know, and I think uh, next year in the Stadium Super Truck Series, you're going to see a few guys from off-road that, uh, 
that that you know, you know, the Jesse Johnsons, obviously, you know, he's trying to put a deal together. Um, you know, you're probably going to see, uh, you know, the Ricky Johnsons and, uh, you know what I mean, and people like that. But I think you're going to see a lot of guys that you've never seen in an off-road truck before that have a lot of money that race in maybe NASCAR, IndyCar, Global Rallycross, come and race stadium sewer trucks. I don't think that the stadium super trucks are going to harm uh, Torque and Lucas Oil, but, I, you know, I, I don't think it's going to going to take any car counts away. Uh, I do think that uh, Torque and Lucas Oil, uh, my hope is that they can at least get together next year on their schedules and, and don't overlap anything and, and give some teams a chance that would want to run both series or at least hit a few events from, from either series uh, the chance to do so. Yeah, because I know that there's a ton of Lucas Oil racers that want to be at Cranon over Labor Day. Uh, you know, I think that if nothing happens to their truck at Reno, they may try and make the trek back to Cranon. But, uh, you know, it's a tough haul going from Reno to Cranon. I mean, we're talking a couple thousand miles, you know, and just a few days to do it in. So, uh, you know, if these guys had two weeks in between, uh, I think it would be a lot easier. I, You know, I, I just hope that they can work together and, and – maybe at least get their schedules so they don't overlap like best in the desert and score have done, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's put it that way. Best in the desert and score have done a great job in recent years of not overlapping races or having them piggyback on each other. And, uh, I think it's been, uh, been great for both series. So, you know, let's just hope that, uh, all of the series can work together next year and find a, find a happy medium. Um, let's see here. Let's go down. Did I buy Jared Johnson the first round to drink since he beat me? Uh, I do owe Jared a drink. Uh, I didn't make it to Reno, so I didn't, uh, I didn't buy Jared a drink, but, uh, I did get a chance to talk to him at, at qualifying and, uh, never met him before, uh, you know, talk to him through social media and stuff like that. But I, I did get a chance to meet Jared at qualifying and obviously he's on the show today. So, <laughs> um, a great guy, you know. I can't say enough about the entire Johnson family: Jesse, Jarrett, you know, and Jimmy. I mean, they their roots are in off road racing, uh, both cars and dirt bikes. Uh, you know, and you know, short course, desert, everything. They just love to race. You know, it doesn't matter if it's uh, you know NASCARs, off road, what they they just have horsepower and and race fuel in their blood. And uh, just a, a great family, a great group of people, very down to earth. Um, you know absolutely as far from arrogant as you can imagine um just absolutely great people and and i don't think you'll meet anybody that will say anything bad about the johnson family just all around great people um and you know and i, I i'm you know happy to be able to consider jesse a friend and, and now jared a friend and uh you know just good people and i will definitely buy uh all the johnsons a drink the first chance i get so um, let's see here. Skipping down, I think. <laughs> How am I doing in the NASCAR challenge? I don't even know. I haven't checked my team in a couple of weeks. I, I said I was so far back, it was just retarded. Uh, down and Dirty Show is going to pay up the $200, but I guarantee you I'm not going to be winning the $200 in the Fantasy NASCAR Challenge. Um, so I, I don't know who I'll be paying it to at this point, but I can tell you one thing. It's not going to be myself. Um, other than that, oh, we're, we're getting a little bit of uh, – uh, a little bit of uh, news. Two races left. I was wrong. One race. I said one race. You're right, Jesse. Uh, Dungey wrapped it up in the second moto. Uh, don't leave Reed out. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I didn't get to watch anything. I normally try to catch everything on the DVR. You know what I mean? It, it, at least Sunday night. But uh, I, I missed totally everything. Um, I think the the next race up is uh, a couple weeks from now. I know we don't race next weekend at AMA Motocross. I think it's... Uh, I think it's uh, at least two weeks out, and then uh, there's another one mid-September, I believe. And then I know the women's uh, women's motocross that I've been watching this year, uh, just because uh, Ashley Filek's been so dominant. Um, I think they've got one to two races left as well. They didn't race this weekend at Unadilla, but I do, do know they've got uh, one to two races. Uh, I didn't get a chance. I literally uh, was uh, – my, my brain was fried yesterday. Um, HDRA preview. We've got uh, got a lot of racing going on this weekend. Uh, obviously, we've got uh, uh, Lucas Oil at uh, at Reno, and we've got uh, the Prim race, uh, the night race, Dust Till Dawn, HDRA and AVRA uh, combined event uh, kicking off. It starts at eight in the evening, so that should uh, should be really cool. Um, definitely a night race. Uh, get your HD lights on and and bolt a few extras on because you're going to need them. Um, Got uh, an interesting entry list shaping up so far. Uh, class one, we've got uh, five entries. Uh, Cam uh, Theroux, he's uh, he's raced uh, just about every race so far um, this year. Uh, he's first on the entry list, and I believe he's leading the points. 
Uh, Mike Mitchell, uh, who was the, the big money winner in, in Reno, he uh, he's racing again as well. Um, got got a handful of uh, five sixteens and one two sixteens, uh, a handful of uh, of mini trucks, handful of big trucks. When I say handful, I'm talking three to four entries. Um, the the other big class, other than class one, is class fourteen hundred. Uh, obviously, Brandon Arthur, who we had on last week, is racing, but. Uh, just a, a big energy list for class 1400. That's become, uh, come one of their marquee classes almost. You know, I'm sure with, uh, with Vegas Torino just getting over, people didn't want to pre, uh, pre enter because they didn't know if they were going to make the night race. I think with, uh, a month and a half until, uh, until the park race, you're going to see some guys show up, uh, through the night race this weekend and, uh, you know, and, and see what they can do and see if they can win, uh, the big bonuses that HDRA is, uh, throwing up. Um, should be, uh, should be really exciting and uh i you know stay tuned I'll, I'll keep you updated on facebook and that and and see you know as we get closer and people that i, I see entering the race but uh should be uh should be good a good race and uh it's brutal and prim i guess 250 mile race five fifty mile loops um so it should uh should be a lot of fun um uh, other than that uh dirt sports uh we've had uh had a little bit of uh interesting uh conversation on dirt sports over on race desert and uh one of my big announcements is is uh i've uh i've inked a deal with race desert dot com and uh i'm going to be i guess the the i don't know what we're gonna call it quite yet but the official uh radio show of race desert dot com something like that but but one of the things in our agreement that we're gonna do every every week is uh the hot topic on uh, on their forum either uh either short course or desert racing, whatever their hottest topic is, uh, I'm going to cover on the radio show. Uh, so this is the first time that we're going to, uh, going to be doing this. Um, so your race desert hot topic this week is dirt sports magazine. Uh, there have been a lot of, a lot of rumors flying around and whether they're going out of business, they're doing this, they're doing that. I can uh, tell you this dirt sports is not going out of business. They're doing fine. They had a huge boost set up at Vegas Torino. Uh, I mean, complete trailer, giving out magazines, their latest magazine, the whole works, uh, just handing out flyers and pamphlets and, and magazines like you couldn't believe, stickers. Um, and over the past week, I did get my latest uh, Dirt Sports magazine in the mail that has uh, Ivan Stewart's uh, iconic uh, iconic PPI single-seat trophy truck on the cover. Uh, so I can tell you they're still mailing out magazines. So uh, Dirt Sports is not going away. They are there. I guess they've had some distribution problems. Um, they're trying to get the magazines and back issues that people have missed uh, out, but uh, they are still taking subscriptions. Uh, they are still uh, still very much in business, uh, so you don't have to don't have to worry about that. Uh, I would feel 100% safe going to their website and subscribing. Uh, great magazine, and they and they support our sport uh, like no other magazine does. So uh, definitely uh, check that out. And uh, that's our RaceDesert.com segment of the week and our hot topic, Dirt Sports Magazine. So they are here to stay, uh, and so go and subscribe. Um, our product spotlight this week, a uh, little bit different. Uh, this is kind of kind of a whirlwind product spotlight just because it kind of dropped in my ha lap. And uh, it's a good product spotlight because, it's one, it's fresh in my mind, and, two, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to even try it until race day. Uh, those of you that uh, that follow me on uh, on social media know that uh, that I recently, obviously, Impact uh, Race Products is is a great partner of mine. Great people over there. Um, they sent me a, a brand new Impact carbon fiber uh, helmet. It was called the Air Draft. Um, it's the same helmet uh, that the guys in NASCAR use. Um, I just wanted to uh, to talk a little bit about the helmet and uh, and a lot about what goes into it. Uh, first off. Uh, I had never tried the helmet on. I told them my helmet size, uh, and the impact facility, I believe, the, the only place that had the right helmet because I didn't get the top airport, I got the three quarter, was in, uh, was actually Mastercraft, uh, which them and impact the same company in San Diego. So they shipped it back to their North Carolina store, my helmet. And this goes back about three weeks ago, okay? My helmet gets shipped from San Diego to North Carolina. Uh, then the guy that does my helmet wraps, TK Designs, picks my helmet up in North Carolina at the Impact Store, which is literally a couple uh, blocks away from his store. So he goes and he wraps the thing, takes it back to uh, takes it back to uh, Impact, 
Uh, Impact and Racing Electronics have inked a deal to do radio wiring. So Racing Electronics, which is also down the street because we're in NASCAR country now, uh, wires my helmet. Um, so anyways, between Impact, TK Wraps, and Racing Electronics, they all get my helmet all done, whatever. They button it up, ship it out. I get it two days before the race. Uh, I don't even get a chance to qualify in the helmet because I didn't have a chance to get my head and neck restraint uh, uh, bolted into it. Um, so anyways, uh, Mastercraft and Impact, who are at Vegas Arena, take this new helmet. Uh, they install a helmet skirt on it, install an amber face shield, and then they uh, <laughs> and then they drill holes in it at contingency and install a new Hans, which I've never worn before in my life either. I've uh, worn D-cells and I've worn Defenders, never a Hans. Um, so anyways, after all said and done, I go into the race, never have put this helmet on in my entire life, never worn a Hans in my entire life. I've run, worn other H&Rs, uh, you know what I mean? And so I go to run a 550-mile race. I looked at the people at Impact who are good friends of mine, and I looked them straight in the eye before the race, and I said, this is all on you. I said, I, I put my, my life and my trust in your hands, and I said, I've never worn this before, and I'm going to enter a 550-mile race. I said, I hope the thing fits and it doesn't drive me nuts. Uh, they said, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. Well, anyways, they take off. I can tell you this already. They were 100% right. Uh, the Hans, um, I didn't even know I was wearing it, which is different than other head and neck restraints I've worn in the past. Uh, I've always been able to notice them. They've bothered me, but I've worn them just because they're safer. The Hans didn't notice it one bit. Um, secondly, the helmet, uh, the aerodynamics built into this thing, uh, they took a lot from, uh, from their IndyCar development uh, when they developed this helmet. Uh, just absolutely amazing the aerodynamics going into it. Um, no buffeting whatsoever. You know, I think I got uh, the truck uh, up to about 126 or 7, I think was uh, what I could notice I clocked at. Um, no buffeting whatsoever. Other helmets I've worn, you get up to 100, 105, that thing's shaking all over like crazy. Uh, this thing, no no buffeting whatsoever, which is amazing. Um, another thing cool about, uh, about the, the Impact helmet, uh, their eye port, most helmets have uh, have foam around the eye port. Uh, not the manufacturer, but after the fact, people install the, the foam around the eye port because uh, the other ones leak dust in because uh, they don't seal right. Uh, Impact is so, uh, is so efficiently made and so exact, the specifications on there, you do not have to wear, uh, wear foam around the eye port, which is amazing. The thing seals so, so good from the factory that, uh, that you don't have to worry about it, which is, which is awesome. And, uh, it's also, you don't have to wear the Velcro on your face shield like you have to. You know, that's what's funny. You guys in off road, you immediately get a helmet, put foam around the eye port and Velcro down your face shield so it doesn't lift up. Impact helmet, no Velcro, no foam. Um, so, you know, what can I say? Uh, the helmet was amazing. Uh, no buffeting. It fit right. Uh, the Hans device was awesome. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, if you're looking for a new helmet, uh, obviously, you know, impact carbon fiber helmet, you're looking at about 1500 bucks for one of those. They do make the exact same helmet, not in carbon fiber, uh, just not quite as light, uh, but still a, a phenomenal helmet for about 800 bucks. Uh, that's worth looking into too. Uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about the helmet. They treated me right, and uh, you know, I would honestly say I'm gonna I'm gonna put my stamp of, of approval on the Impact helmet as well as the Hans device. I will never wear another H and R other than a Hans again, and uh, probably never wear uh, another helmet other than an Impact again. It would take a a lot to get me out of an Impact helmet. Uh, just an amazing group of people. The support is awesome. Uh, out of all the helmet manufacturers, they were the only one at Vegas Torino. They support our sport uh, and make a phenomenal product. And trust me, I've tried uh, every brand under the sun as far as helmets go, and the Impact's the first one that I've been this happy with. So uh, definitely check them out, impactraceproducts.com. Um, and closing out the show, just a short show, like I said, I was fried yesterday from getting back. Uh, Formula Drift, I'd said last week, uh, September 2nd, NBC Sports, are, uh, they're going to have full coverage of, uh, of Formula Drift. Their TV series is, is starting. It's going to run for about two months and cover every, every event. Uh, it's going to be kind of cool the way they do it every weekend. Uh, it's going to be like uh, the series is running on every weekend, but, uh, you know, it's been running all year. Um, also, JimKahana.com, they've had uh, full updates uh, on the Formula Drift series. Uh, they've got full TV on JimKahana.com. Um, you know, hour-long episodes covering each race thus far. So uh, definitely check that up. out. Upcoming events, we've got HDRA this weekend. We've got Short Course in Reno. 
And then the following weekend, the big one in Cranon, Wisconsin. Uh, you know, that that's the big one. That's the biggest race of the year. And uh, the cool thing about it, Torque will have coverage live on their website. So uh, you don't have to worry about the TV. Tune in on your laptop, your computer, stream it to your web TV, whatever you got to do. But uh, they'll have full coverage live online on uh, Torque's website. So definitely check that out. Um, World Rally Championship is in action this weekend in Germany. And Formula Drift is in Las Vegas under the lights. Uh, should be cool. You know, it's been a little hot, so uh, they're going to have a big race in Vegas under under the lights of the Las Vegas Strip, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be at dark. So I'm sure these guys will have their neon on their cars, and it should be uh, should be fun. Um, other than that, we've got uh, some global rally cross coming up the end of September in Las Vegas. I will be at that event, so it should be cool. I'll uh, be posting updates uh, to social media from uh, Pit Road at Global Rally Cross Las Vegas. Um, super, uh, motocross series winding down. Uh, don't have a race this weekend, but uh, check back in two weeks uh, for the next round of motocross. And uh, that's about it. Uh, sorry it's a short show this uh, week, but... Uh, I'm a little fried from Vegas to Reno. I got to get back to uh, to my other day job, and uh, you know, thanks again for uh, Jesse and Jarrett Johnson for coming on air. I, I appreciate it. I know Jarrett had a red eye last night. Just got back to North Carolina. He wanted to go to bed, but I kept him up to to come on the show. So uh, thanks a lot, Jarrett, and uh, thanks Jesse for coming on air. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll definitely be tuned in this weekend uh, for Lucas Oil from Reno. Uh, you know. I want to see uh, Rob Mack go for victory number 200. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. And uh, stay tuned for my Speed Energy teammate, Jesse Johnson, in his super light. Let's see if uh, he can put it on the podium again. So uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks to all our supporters, Speed Energy, UPR, Blue Auto Resort and Casino, Parker Motor Company, Intense Tees, Ahern Equipment Rentals, Casey Highlights, uh, Mastercraft and Impact for everything that they do. And uh, everybody that listens in that supports the show and uh, and followed me on uh on social media over the over the week, uh, you know, when I was racing. Uh, I appreciate it all. And uh, thanks to everybody for, for tuning in. And like I said, either next week uh, or the following week, we're going to have Robbie Gordon on air. Uh, so he's coming up. Uh, we're going to have a UTV Super Show coming up with, uh, you know, with lots of people from uh, the UTV industry sometime in the next month or two. Uh, I could list off a, name, uh, a n- number of short course drivers that I've got lined up to come on air, but I don't know what week so far. So, uh so, uh, you know, you, you're just going to have to stay tuned for that. But I appreciate uh, all the support, guys, and uh, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you later. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.